how do I feel looking back on 25 years? I'm incredibly proud that we are still here as such a vibrant organization. We are a bunch of guys who literally learn the game by watching it on YouTube. And they get hit, and they're like, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> the sense of camaraderie and, and seeing that continue off the field. It was in the first few years, it was kind of like, this could fall apart tomorrow. All is in readiness here, the stars are out, the big stage is here, the red carpet is rolled out. Looking forward to this as we like to say, a humdinger. And the question is, can you teach old dogs old tricks? This is a rematch of last year's grand final between the two sides. They made the grand final last year, now a rematch. It was a slugfest. Every single player on that team is a weapon. I'll tell you what, if that doesn't make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, you might want to check your pulse. So, hang on to a partner. This is going to get rough and ready. The two best uh, sides here at the Nationals get to rise into the top in Prince fashion. And these boys are going to get it on smash mouth in the middle. the fact that all these Americans love this sport. From the Silver Lake Sports Complex in Ontario, California, this is the 2022 USAFL National Championships. This is the Division IV Men's Semifinal, one of the two that are happening right now. We've got the Des Moines Roosters taking on the Denver Bulldogs, and this should be a fantastic game. My name is Brian Barish. Great to have your company as well for this single elimination match determine who will play a little bit later on in the Division IV Grand Final. Now, a very interesting situation occurred 
all six teams in this men's division four ended up all tied at one and one. And it all came down to points percentage. That is the number of points scored divided by the number of points that each team allowed. The Des Moines Roosters won pool, uh, won pool B, or pool A rather, based on that per superior percentage with St. Louis coming in second. And then the other uh, semifinal pits uh, we have down here, whoop, the, the other semifinal pits, uh, well, we're, check we're double checking that now, but uh, sorry, got to do a big old, got to do a big old reset and tell you that the Las Vegas, and tell you that the Las Vegas Gamblers will take on the Orange County Giants in the other semifinal. We'll tell you that the Des Moines team also has players from the Boston Demons, the Kansas City Power, the Wisconsin Wombats, and the Milwaukee Bombers, and the Denver Bulldogs. This is actually the third team for the Denver Bulldogs. They have players from the Seattle Reserves on their team as well. So we'll be referring to them as the Roosters and the Bulldogs. The Roosters are in the red jumpers with the black and the white stripes, and they're heading from left to right on your screen here in this first 20-minute half. And the Bulldogs are in the blue with the red. We're underway as the ball gets taken down, and it's a free kick, and they'll play on quickly will the Roosters. Sending that one forward with Shoemaker for, for Des Moines, and then running into the man is Matthew Elliott, and then... Ball gets knocked loose. Zach Vanderplug has the footy. Now is able to try and squeeze that one forward. And the ball comes loose. The ball goes down. And there's a mass of humanity over there. And we'll have a ball up in the right forward pocket for Des Moines. Des Moines lost to Golden Gate yesterday. They defeated St. Louis Las Vegas. But that loss was just enough. They lost by just enough to where they still ended up topping the group one percentage. Denver trying to get it out there. Kerwin for Denver now trying to chase it as they're desperately trying to get out the back here. Ball goes down. Everybody sort of pushing around. Everyone down mushroom farming. But the ball comes out loose. There's a shot for Kroll across the body. And that one will, will go out of bounds. Just finds the field of play, however. And there'll be a boundary throw in about uh, 25 meter, about five meters around. Ball will come spinning back in the play. As Denver now, Des Moines with the footy, and there's a nice mark taken by Matt Linebaugh, who was a prime mover yesterday for this uh, Denver side here in Division Four. one of the handful of Seattle reserves playing on this team. And the ball is locked up over there in front of Tournament Central, in front of the merchandise tent here in Ontario, California. We have not really seen the sun in the day and a half we've been here at this ground. It's nice and cool overcast, good footy weather, and it's just a matter of how teams will compete, will, will uh, cope rather, with the wet ground. The ball is up on that far side, and the ball will be locked in there tighter away than my secrets. And uh, we'll have a ball up directly across from us. Brian Barish here with you. As remember, the winner will come back at 1 p.m. local time. That's 4 o'clock Eastern to play in the Division Four Grand Final. And we'll have all the action here for you on Go Live Sportscast. The ball is tied up on that far side. Denver yesterday, they defeated Sacramento, but fell to the Orange County uh, combination that also has players from uh, L.A. and San Diego. That game going on between St. Louis and Orange County is going on behind us, and we'll try and keep you abreast of the score over there. That one is sent out in the middle of the ground. You hear the Des Moines contingent to our left as that one is played. There's a chance for a goal. Goes over to the defender, but hits the behind post. It did hit the ground first. Now, the behind post is considered out of play. If it hits the, the ground before it hits the, the post and it's treated as if it bounced out of bounds, it'll be a boundary three throw in there for about three meters around. Here are the voice of Sean Chacon, who's coach, helping the coach as well. The head coach of the Des Moines Roosters is Donnie Hess. Ball comes to the ground, picked up, scooped out the back, shot off of one foot for goal, and that one is smothered in front. That was off the foot of Ben Hauser, and it'll be a free kick, and Des Moines will have an opportunity as the trailing official comes all the way from the center of the ground to make that call. That'll be a free kick. 
the, that thrilling game in the women's division that you just watched, the Seattle Grizzlies defeating the Denver Bulldogs. And Seattle will have a chance to play San Francisco in the semifinal. You'll see that game here in a couple of hours. There's a chance for goal. It just goes off in front off the hands of Stephen McVicker. And I believe that's a, we have a free kick up coming. Well, the ball has gone out of bounds. Ball has in fact gone out of bounds. So a boundary throw in. Ball comes back in, dropped in front. Ball comes across. And it's a one-on-one -on -one contest, going to get it. And then being held off the ball was Caleb Darty, one of the players from Kansas City on this Des Moines team. Comes out back to Hausner. Hausner is claimed, and they got it. Ball cried the crowd, and the umpire agrees. Free kick now for the Denver Bulldogs out of their center back. Again, Bulldogs with players from the Seattle Grizzlies. And generally speaking, they're the ones wearing the black shorts with the blue jumpers. That ball ski jumped high into the air. Doherty is there, and it's spoiled nicely by Jared Thompson, who was a prime mover for them in yesterday's matches. Handball's up over the top. Finds the man in Trent McElroy, who's come down from Vancouver. Nice shovel pass to find Mitch McGraw. McGraw was able to get the pass off, and it's a whistle, and it's going to be a free kick now going the other way. As he tackled him cleanly, and it's a free kick, and it will go the way of Lane Bender. Bender taking his time. He's got roughly seven seconds before he's fair game. Plays out to the right side now. One-on-one -on -one contest. Goes to take the mark. Bounces off his chest and into the hands of Aaron Winkler. Winkler will come back the other way. Going out to play soccer is McGraw. Going to hand that one back now is Keith Moore. The lone representative from the Wisconsin Wombats playing for Denver. And I'll tell you what, he did the he did the bats proud. He kicked two goals yesterday in that game against the Sacramento side. Ball goes to ground. It's going to be picked up, taken down. That could have been high on McGraw. No call. But the umpire crosses his arms like the Monsignor and, in fact, gives a free kick. A little bit of pushing and shoving afterwards, but nothing too much in that as, a, as the uh, call was made against Josh Curtis. They'll continue down the line now. Ball goes high up in the air. Ball, ball goes to ground. And when it's sent back the other way, drops in front. Going to get it is Curtis. Curtis turns this one in. Still no score, by the way. As the ball goes down, ball goes out of bounds. We've played roughly about five, six minutes of play. There's been no score on the Watch AFL scoreboard. The winner of this game will come back to play in the Division Four Grand Final a little bit later on today against either St. Louis or Orange County. That match happening behind us. We'll try and keep an eye on that one for you. Meanwhile, here at Field 4, they send this one on, and that one is turned around. Popped up into the air, going back to get it. They're just trying to stab the ball forward. And the ball comes out again, looking for Zach Vanderplug. And now Denver will come back slowly in the other direction. And a little bit of a pile on over there. And still looking for the football. Vanderplug is out there. Ball goes to ground. That could have been a low tackle, and it is. And so Denver will get the free kick from their back right pocket. I said there was no score. In fact, uh, it is one to nothing. We have over on the scoreboard one to nothing in favor. Well, well, I don't think they did. They have one point over there. So I think I think we'll we'll double check at halftime. It's very one of us missed it. Either I missed it or the scoreboard missed it. So the scoreboard is showing one to nothing, and that would be in favor of Des Moines. And that's the scoreboard here at the ground. Just waiting a uh, player slow to get up on the far side of the ground. We have more action here for you on division on field four. And of course, 11 o'clock at the top of the hour, we've got the, we've got women's action here in Orange County and Centennial. That is, in a sense, a 
semifinal match in women's division two to determine who will play the Texas Heat in the grand final a little bit later on. We'll have for you here on this field. Here's an opportunity. Going to pick that one up is Curtis. Curtis will turn round, send that one in the sticks, and that one is almost marked there defensively, in fact, taken by the number 11 for Denver, who is Aaron Sullivan, the New Zealander. Sullivan goes out to the far side, looks out the far side. Ball goes to ground now, and they continue on. And that's Mark. This is Denver's really their first opportunity. We have confirmed, at least for now, that Des Moines is leading one to nothing. So that's what we'll have. We'll, of course, double check at halftime for you. They do have to confirm the scores with the scoreboard. The ball is going out of bounds, and we'll come back the other direction now. A lot of action here. Of course, you can check out everything happening in the USAFL and USAFL.com. And USAFL.com slash national slash 2022 for all the scores and results. On social media, Facebook.com slash USAFL, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube at USAFL 1997. Ball comes back high into the air. That one is punched away nicely there by, I believe by, that's going to end up being Cockenauer, John Cockenauer from Boston. That'll be a boundary throwing up on that far side. Ball comes back in the play, but the umpire has spotted something, or in fact, we might actually do this again. We have a lot of interchanges happening right in front of us. Ball comes back into play. Kurt Hiller in there for Des Moines. And it's a rolling mall situation across the way here. Ball gets knocked down. And again, in the, in the middle of the ground here, and that one squirts out. Ball goes free over in that corner, and the ball goes out of bounds directly across from us. The Denver Bulldogs have not won a Division IV title since their reserves team did it. I want to say in 2012, no, it wouldn't have been 2012. I want to say it would have been like 2011, I believe, maybe even a little bit before that. Ball goes down. Des Moines Division Four winners in 20. They won Division Four in 2012. The umpire crosses his arms. We'll have a ball up directly across from us. There's not really a lot of pace in this game. It seems like a lot of tie-ups here. Des Moines had a couple of chances forward, but now De De Denver is trying to do so, and they are kind of struggling a little bit to go forward. Take a peek at the score at the uh, field behind us and just trying to see if we can locate a score for you. Once again, we have Orange County taking on St. Louis. And we have one team up 19 to nothing. I'm going to take a guess and, sell, and tell you that that's the Orange County. Orange County, because they're the home team, they're the higher seed. They lead St. Louis 19 to nothing. And they're essentially a, the home team here because. Again, it's Orange County and LA and San Diego. Ball is up on that far side over there and controlled. Now it's loose on the ground. And spinning away nicely now is Jacob Spain, who plays well in the rain, but it's not raining today. Just got the handball away. Now in the middle, Kerwin goes across nicely, and here come the Bulldogs the other direction. That one is sent out and sent out on the full. And we'll have, a, we'll have a free kick going the other way. As a Jeff Shakespeare comes off and is replaced by Byron Spradlin. Jeff, a longtime member of the Bulldogs and also on the national team as well, uh, rather on the uh, reserves team and now playing for the thirds. Ball is up on that far side. Somebody... And a first aid tent over there. Ball comes back in the play right in front of Dan Wicks from the Seattle Grizzlies, one of a number of very talented photographers in the USAFL community. And you're going to get a chance to see his work at the Wicks Picks, W-I-X-P-I-X, -I -I to check out his work as well as that of Jerry Wong at My Footy Picks as well. 
Ball goes out of bounds once again. Been a good weekend so far for the Denver Bulldogs. It's as well as the Division I team going to be in the grand final. Division Three team almost assured a spot in the grand final there. And now the Division Four side looking to do the same and make it to the grand final as well. It'll be the first time that a club has had teams in three grand finals. A lot of work to do. They trail 1-0 on the Watch AFL scoreboard to this Des Moines team. Ball goes in. That one is sent forward by Des Moines. Ball goes to ground. It's picked up. Here is Curtis. Curtis squares up. It goes across the face and goes out of bounds. But a good opportunity now. I think that did find the field of play, but Denver is acting like it went out of bounds on the full. Ball comes back in the play, and that one again is punched out. Kerwin with the long sleeves, can't miss him. Out to the near side, knocked down by Ben Hausner. Now they're going to turn that one in. Hausner, oh, that was a that was a bit of a shankopotamus, and it's gone straight out on the full. So free kick now again for Denver out of the back left pocket. Comes out to the near side. Four players converge. And again, that was Hausner who was in on the play once again. Goes and just kicks the ball off the ground, but only as far again as that man Hausner who sends it back inside 50. Ball gets knocked down, and now here it comes to Curtis who slots that one through for a behind, but a good opportunity for Des Moines. And so that extends their lead as we have it. on the Watch AFL scoreboard. So Des Moines two, Denver nothing. Des Moines, is this, this right side of the field, that I-15 side, that is the scoring end of the ground on this field, it seems. Especially now, we have a little bit of a wind picking up, blowing from left to right on your screen. Ball comes back in the play. Goes to ground, sends that one out, gets knocked down. And here they come, fends off a couple of tackles, sends that one high up in the air. Going to get it is Curtis, or check that, that was Chacon who gets knocked down. He took a good mark yesterday. This is Anderson now for Denver, trying desperately to clear it out. Does it to the near side. Now over to get it. There's a good job by Scott to spring Curtis. Curtis is taken down, and he is G-O-N-E gone, and Denver has it. This is McGraw. Now they're going to reset the kick. They won a 50-meter penalty, or in this case it would be 25. They're calling for it. I don't think they're going to get it. So it'll be a free kick now for Denver, setting this one into the middle of the ground. Nice sliding, almost taking the mark there. believe that was Hickey who almost, who almost took it. And we have a free kick. It's been awarded to the Roosters. Des Moines leads 2-0. Division four semifinal on the men's side. Winner will play either Orange County or St. Louis. Ball is high up in the air, may bring some rain. Just tried to settle under it. Kerwin was there, couldn't get it. Punched all the way back in the direction of Burpo. Couldn't get to it. Ball goes to ground. Little shovel pass on. Denver with an opportunity, but there is Scott who takes an easy peasy mark. Scott's got an option on the left if he wants him. He also has an option on the right as well. It's going to end up just going straight down Main Street, Main Street with a stabby kick. Overcook looking for Hausner. Sending that one back the other way is Denver. Back now here is Scott. Scott runs through. Finds Darty. Darty throws that one onto the right. Down the line. Nice mark. Almost taken in self-defense by Brookshire. One of the Besides Doherty, one of the other two Kansas City players on this Rooster team. High in the air, two blue jumpers couldn't get to it. A third one could, however, and they finally clear this one out. But a very scrappy game so far. 2-0 the score as the ball goes out of bounds, but just kept in play by Brookshire. But, all, but to Denver's advantage, spinning him around there was Abdallah. And the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a boundary throw-in. 
Or rather, no, it'll be a free kick. I saw the throw in initially, but Abdallah was caught high. Now it's sent in. Nice mark taken, and rising up there was Ryan Shoemaker. Shoemaker will go back. The wind blowing with him a little bit, and that one goes right, it stays right, and it's going completely out on the full. So Des Moines has had the territorial advantage, they've had the possession advantage, they've had more chances, but unfortunately they have not been able to cash them in. Just like a forged check. And now back the other way. Comes out to the near side looking for Dan Kerwin who takes the mark. Kerwin, little short handball. Here come the Bulldogs, sending that one down the line. Skippers that one through, goes off the, off the knees of Ken Noguer, who sends that one forward, does Denver. Downs in front, bounces over the head, knocked forward nicely by Evan Hall for Des Moines. Scott sends it back inside the offensive 50 for the Roosters. Over to get it, he gets taken down almost without the footy. Taking him down was Anderson, and indeed a free kick has been called for tackling without the football. Denver, try, uh, Des Moines rather, trying to add to their lead. They lead 2-0. Here on Go Live Sportscast, I'm Brian Barish. Great to have your company here at the 2022 National Championships. Championship Sunday. We will give out a lot of trophies. This one is sent on the way. It's starting left, and it's through for another behind. Des Moines 3 on the Watch AFL scoreboard. Denver nothing, and there is halftime. Very scrappy opening 20 minutes, very rough at times. Their team's still getting adjusted to the wetness of the football. Des Moines got three chances, they missed them all. And the score at the end of 20 minutes of this Division IV semifinal, it's the Des Moines Roosters three, the Denver Bulldogs nothing. We're gonna take, take a break, step aside, come right back. You're watching the 2020, 22 USAFL National Championships here on Go Live Sportscast.
And welcome back to the 2022 United States Australian Football League National Championships at Silver Lake Sports Complex, Norco, California. Peter Holden and Mackenzie Adamo with you on commentary for this Women's Division 2 match between the Centennial Tigers and Orange County Giants. It's Orange County leading 6-2 to two over the Centennial Tigers at halftime. As we begin this half, remember Orange County King to left of screen and wearing the, I guess for Aussie Rules fans, we know as the traditional catch jumpers, Centennial Tigers are kicking to right of screen. And Mary uh, Delgado has now got the football and she just kicks it in towards the wing position, wanting Delfina Delgado to try and pick it up. And uh, umpires come in, blowing the whistle and says that's in the back and it will be a free kick. And we'll just see which way he's pointing it. Now, the good thing news we've seen is Sarah Edwards Rona is out there, Mackenzie. So the the knock that she cop hasn't seemed to be too bad. Right. Just a stinger. She's back. As the kick up the line, looking for uh, Melissa Wilhelm to try and run onto the football. She'll receive it now from her teammate there in Tracy McLean. Now hurry kick out there by Mora to go inside 40. Now they've got an opportunity. I can see Rojas over the side. They can get it out to her, but it's Katrina Shearer that will pick up the football, kicks it. But Sarah edwards Rona has it. Here comes Lizzie Sawyer. Sawyer does well to dispossess her. Ball hits the ground. Hurry kick out there by Manaski to try and go further up the field. Hand pass to the side. Yoon. Sawyer comes in there as well. Ball ping-ponging around like it's in a pinball machine. Moira tries to fire out the hand pass. Now an opportunity for the Tigers as Yoon tried to lay a tackle that didn't stick. Hand pass went sideways. And the umpire's blown the whistle. Well, was the player dealt with afterwards? And a down, and looks like a free kick and 25. Okay. Trying to figure out quite exactly what the 25 was for, but nonetheless. A chance for the Centennial Tigers to regain the lead with a long kick into the forward line. Just bounce off the chest. In comes Shearer. Wraps up her opponent. And the umpire once again is uh, going to call for a ball up. Of course, as this uh, contest goes on and Shearer knocks the football forward, wanting Monaghan to get back there for uh, Orange County. The ball goes out of bounds. There's something else actually for these players to play for. Uh, McKenzie as, as we go on and, and it's not just obviously you know best on ground honours etc and, and their team uh, winning uh, their division's premiership but we know very soon there's going to be international football back once again particularly on the women's side we saw it on the men's this year with the parallel cup and if I'm to be right because uh, I think AFL Canada let the cat out of the bag a little bit early when they announced their northern light side their women's side is that we may be looking forward to next year the USA freedom back again and maybe the liberty to take on the Canadians. Absolutely, yeah, I think they're out scouting. And the ball has gone to the left-hand side for a minor score, so that is now three behind for Centennial Tigers. One straight six for Orange County, so Orange County six, Centennial three. So like you said, people are out there scouting at the moment. The opportunity of, even though your side may finish last, if you put in a good effort in your position, you could be representing your country next year. Absolutely. We're excited to see the Freedom Program uh, kind of reinvigorate. As the ball's on the outer side with uh, Alyssa Armstrong, now picked up by Sarah Edwards Rona. Puts it in the direction of centre half forward. Oh, that's clearly holding, I think. McLean uh, had her opponent all wrapped up without the ball. Umpire's missed it. And umpire Laurie Root from a distance has spotted a trip. And it's going the way there of the Centennial Tigers. So they have the opportunity from about 45 metres out from goal to try and set a target. How do you like Orange County's defence at the moment, how they're structuring up, McKenzie? They're doing a really good job. They're playing man on, and we have Hoda in the back. She's a really good defender, stopping those balls, taking the kickouts. Ball okay. will sneak over for a point. Uh, Lizzie Sawyer electing to take the safe road. So four behinds for Centennial and one straight six for Orange County Giants, 6-3. to three. The scoreboard attendants have fallen asleep. I forgot to add on a point. Lizzie Sawyer played on and kicked out. Big kick. And it is indeed a massive kick. Here comes Wilhelm who cleans up uh, Gabrielle Bruro on the way through. Wilhelm versus Edwards Rona again. Edwards Rona picks up the football, gets on the right boot, pops it in long, went over the head there of a player who was trying to put the arms up for it in uh, Hotter. Now they kick going back in the Wilhelm direction. Awkward bounce coming through McLean who got brought down brilliantly by Edwards Rona. And the umpire says holding the football and it will be a free kick. So... 
It will be going the way of Edwards Rona for the Centennial Tigers from about 45 metres out from goal. Her side leading by, sorry, trialling by two points. Gives it off to Gabby Bureau from the Quebec Saints. And across to Katrina Shearer. Shearer directly in front of goal and she'll put it through and put the Centennial Tigers up. They now go to 1-4-10 to 1-6. straight six. That's 10-6 to six, the lead for the Centennial Tigers over the Orange County Giants here at uh, the Silver Lake Sports Complex in Norco, California. And what have you thought of our venue this year, Mackenzie Adamo? First time ever at Silver Lakes. It's, it's beautiful. The grounds are great. It's massive. The fields are so big. There's other soccer games happening around us. It's very exciting. Mountains in the background. Beautiful weather today. Indeed, and I think, is it called the River House? They've got the big facility there in the uh, middle, double-story building. And uh, But that is not actually where the after party is being had. There's even, even more here to the Silver Lake Sports Complex. To our immediate right, just off camera, is the large stage where they'll have a couple of bands and the presentations of the trophies. They call it the backyard. There's a pond in the middle, and uh, I, I unfortunately don't think it's a matter of if. I think it's a matter of when who ends up in the pond. Absolutely. There's <laughs> going to be dirty players, sweaty <laughs> players, just heading right over to the after party. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe take bets. As the ball is thrown up in the air, Wilhelm tries to come through. Katrina Shearer as well, and umpire Laurie Roop circling, and... Blows the whistle again and will be called for a ball up. Clear the way and we'll get play underway once more. Just on the edge of the two circles. Orange County trailing at the moment by four points. Dancing around there, McKee didn't know where to go. The Dune umpire says free kick going the way of Centennial. Ends up with Edwards Rona. Aston's wide open. And that's what she does, puts it in that direction. Ashton from the Ohio Valley River Rats. What a fantastic name for a club. He's copped up the football though. So Lizzie Sawyer goes out towards the wing position. Two on three. Numbers favoring the Tigers here at the moment. Player claim without it there in Ortiz. Umpire says no. Wilhelm, Edwards Rona, and the ball goes over the boundary line and out of bounds just before Castellari. Squid can come away with the footy. Squid, of course, from the St. Louis Blues. Right to see a women's player there as well. Hopefully it's the start of a program, a start of something there in St. Louis for women's football. Just going to ground there, Moira. Yoon, caught by Shearer. And the umpire says holding the football. And once again, that'll be a free kick going the way of Katrina Shearer. They call her Sonic, but she's missing the blue streak in the hair. Her trademark's gone. Yes, but you can't miss her. <laughs> Shearer, oh, smashed afterwards as she kicks it up the field. Sawyer wants to try and get in there. Now coming away with it is Monaghan. Monaghan goes long. Edwards Rona gets Falcon by the football. The umpire says she was pushed by Aileen Yoon in that contest. And it will be a free kick away of the Centennial Tigers and Sarah Edwards Rona, who has been battered from pillar to post today. There may be a little acting there. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> The, 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 the one way to find out is if they go for the ice bath later on, then you know, nope, that's not acting. <laughs> uh, the kick long by her, looking for the safety of the boundary line out of bounds, and that allow them to uh, reset from about 45 metres out from goal. The question is, are both sides using too much fuel in the tank? Because they're going to have to back up at 2 o'clock to take on the Texas Heat in the grand final. Absolutely. Some of the players are looking a bit tired. Again, we said it's a big field. High contact, according to umpire Laurie Roof, and gives it to Ashton. Ashton. Yeah, Jesse Ashton from the Ohio Valley River Rats playing for the Centennial Tigers in the Columbus Catch Jumper today, if that doesn't confuse you enough. <laughs> Kicks it in towards the forward pocket region. Trying to get back there. Yoon, close towards the boundary line, the ball will go over and out. In fact, McKee, rather, was back there for the Orange County Giants. Sees the ball over and about five metres around from the left-hand point post. By my estimates, we've probably still got something like uh, seven or eight minutes remaining in this match. The ball is thrown back into play. Shear again doing the ruck work close towards the boundary line. Out of bounds on the full, according to the boundary umpire that's there on the spot. And let's see which way he points as the free kick. There'll be a little bit of a conversation between the field umpire and the boundary umpire. And it came off the foot of a Columbus player. So the Giants will now have the opportunity to 
restart the play and try and clear it off their half back. They're looking for Moira who dropped it. Wilhelm goes in there. Squid is watching on. Ashton tried to get in there too. Banaski fires out the hand pass over the top. They try and soccer it off the ground. Outside the defensive 40 arc there for Orange County. Getting mown down there, Ortiz. Ball goes back inside the 40. Umpire Laurie Root blows the whistle, comes in. And let's see which way she's pointing. And she indicates downfield free kick to the Centennial Tigers. Ashton kicks it towards the top of the goal square. Yoon is lurking nearby. Off the side of the boot this time by Hotter. Doesn't go too far, though. Moira goes in there, picks up the football, kicks it out to Wilhelm. And I was almost going to say she had a, a paddock of space to work with, but Edwards Rona closed her down quite quickly, and that's easily holding. And that is going to be a free kick. Mackenzie, what can Orange County do to get a score on the board? Because at the moment, from my, from my point of view, they seem to be bogged down in their back half. They are, I think, getting the ball over the head. Um, Centennial seems to be playing a fair bit of defense. So getting the ball over the head and running onto it, I think, is where key for them. As the ball is now on center wing on the tournament central side of the ground, Barreau was getting involved. Here comes Yoon. Barreau got rid of the ball to Squid. So Castellari now put it on the boot, dribbles it forward towards the half forward flank. Sawyer has got the football. Sawyer's got to dance around uh, Ashton and does well. Sawyer gets on the right boot, delivers long and up the line, only for an intercept mark. The Centennial Tigers, that will be 25 metres. No, the umpire just giving a warning there to the player not to go over the mark. Here's a high kick up the line. Wilhelm came charging at it, but Edwards Rona stood tall. What a battle that has been today between Edwards Rona and Wilhelm. Yes, it's fun to see that. A couple of uh, former teammates for yep. the USA Freedom uh, going back to a, a couple of international cup campaigns. As, oh, here comes Shearer from out of nowhere. And the umpire says holding the football. Katrina Shearer, Sonic, caught Monaghan, apparently not Monaghan, rather, Delfina Delgado. I think she's within kicking range here. This could be interesting. In comes Shearer. One-handed drop. Is it effective? I know it's got the distance. It's got the accuracy, and that could be the ball game. 2-4-16 for Centennial Tigers. One straight Six for the Orange County Giants. That's 16 to six. Tigers leading the Giants. Uh, Centennial with the momentum at the moment. Orange County with the work to do. Mackenzie Adamo, I I'm taking a guess that maybe we've got five minutes remaining. Is that enough time for OC to turn it around? They could capitalize. They're fast. They have some good, decent, you know, uh, field awareness. I think they're just getting sucked in a little bit. So we're not seeing them spread out on the field enough. As... The umpire has the ball back in the middle of the ground and will restart the play again. McLean doing the ruck work there for the Orange County Giants. Coming through there was Shearer on the ground. McKee. Wilhelm goes in there as well. Edwards Rona. Does she get tripped up? Yes, according to umpire Laurie Roop. And that will be a free kick going the way of the Centennial Tigers. Rona, now on the boot, kicks it up the line. Got punched away because Sawyer was starting to come towards it. Ball on the deck. Castellari, it's Squid. She puts it on the right boot. Goes inside 40 with a kick. Dribbling football. Mary Delgadillo with it. Kicks it up the line. Intercepted. I don't know, pardon me, marked by her teammate, and Melissa Wilhelm. Wilhelm kicks long. Edwards Rona parks herself underneath it. Three bites of the cherry and pulls in a good grab in front of Eileen Yoon. Barreau goes up, gives her a few words of congratulations for that grab. And says, let's play some smart football. Edward Rona gets the hurry up from umpire Laurie Root. Goes for a run and gives a big kick inside 40. But an excellent grab in defense for the Orange County Giants. That took some effort there, McKenzie. That was beautiful. It was a dive catch. Uh, that's by Monaghan, who oh, took it on. Oh, oh, almost done to her. good work. Looking for Sawyer. Sawyer takes a mark. Lizzie Sawyer runs on. Sawyer goes and bombs it down the line. Oh, had it there on the chest, Ortiz, but just couldn't pull it in. Would have been a very good mark if she managed to pull it off. Wilhelm got the kick away before Edwards Runner put her into the ground. 
and they're still tangled up afterwards. Coming in there again, Moira for the Giants. Ashton slaps the ball forward. Now a chance here for the Tigers. The numbers are two on one favoring the Giants as Sawyer comes in there, but it's the one that's winning out. It's now three on one, the math. And the kick off the carpet will go in the direction of the boundary line, chasing after it, Michelle Hotter. Hotter overruns it, goes back, gets it, just puts it on the boot indiscriminately. Works its way up towards the wing, tournament central side of the ground. Umpire's blown the whistle and awarded a free kick here. Everyone pauses in wonderment of which way he's pointing and what for. And it will be going in the direction of the Centennial Tigers and Katrina Shearer. So Shearer will swing around on the right boot. Through several sets of hands. Well, with a chance now to clear it up there for the Orange County Giants. Only as far as Edwards runner. Oh, but Nutmeg do. Went through her legs, but she had backup support from Katrina Shearer. He'll go to the 40 metre mark. Oh, getting caught there was Monaghan. Managed to get rid of the hand pass in the nick of time. Tackle late on as Monaghan went again. Now to Squid. Castellari's got it. Squid ran into trouble when she saw Sawyer coming at her straight away. And all wrapped up there as McKittrick watches on. Told she's a big Pittsburgh Penguins fan. <laughs> as the umpire takes the football back, throws it up in the air. Just quietly, go Islanders. As <laughs> Wilhelm goes in there, tries to get a hand pass out. Trent Shearer did well. Ashton went to ground. He plays over the top, Sawyer. Puts it in towards the middle of the ground. Bureau is coming out to meet it. Bureau ripped into the ground there. Liddell Gadillo. And a good tackle laid on there at that moment by Ortiz. But the advantage comes away for the Centennial Tigers. From 40 metres out from goal. They deliver it towards their forward goal square. But it'll be sent back from whence it came. Arlene Yoon goes in to pick it up. Yoon. Got around one player, then put it on the right. Edwards Rona floating across, couldn't quite hang on to it as Ortiz went with her. Ortiz lays the tackle on. Now umpire's blown the whistle and said, too high, this will be a free kick. Again, for those that have just joined us on USAFL.com, this is the 2022 United States Australian Football League National Championships. Better hold Mackenzie Adamo with you. And on the Watch AFL scoreboard, it's 2 4 16. The Centennial Tigers leading Orange County one straight six. Centennial Tigers made up of players from the Centennial Tigers wearing the Columbus Cats jumper with players from the Columbus Cats along with Ohio Valley River Rats, Quebec Saints, St. Louis Blues as we're right in the goal square here. And Lizzie Sawyer, though, will take it away from the Orange County Giants. They've got support today from players from the Arizona Hawks, Away Eagles and Warsatch War Goals. On the outer side of the ground now, they managed to get the kick away before being brought to ground. Still 50 out from the... Defensive goal there for the Giants as being ripped in McLean. Now they'll be sent back for once again. Oh, that's dropping the football. No play on, according to the umpire. McKittrick goes in to pick up the footy. McKittrick gives off a hand pass quickly. Crash of bodies 35 metres out from goal. Now there's the whistle and has pulled out a free kick going the way of the Centennial Tigers. So... The Tigers will have the footy about uh, 35 metres out from goal. And we have, I reckon, seconds remaining before the full-time hooter. And uh, this will set up a showdown with the Centennial Tigers and Texas Heat in the Division Two Grand Final as Aileen Yoon takes a mark. Do you think Centennial can take it to Texas later this afternoon? We'll see. Texas, uh, you know there they've been they've won both games and I guess they have their bench as much as their separate clubs Austin Crows Houston Lone Stars North Texas Devils they have played against each other regularly and get to train together a little more regularly than the other combine teams yeah absolutely that's a bit of an advantage um, in this D2 competition this year taking the mark is Moira Moira now put it on the right boot and goes inside 40. That's what they need. And an opportunity here for Ortiz to run on. It's an Ampton goal square. Kicks it towards goal and she gets it. Is there enough time? That's the question now. Orange County, two straight 12. Centennial, two, four, 16. That's Orange County, 12. Centennial, 16. We don't have an official clock in front of us. Mackenzie, we're just guessing. 
Do you think there's enough time? Well, I don't know. It's down to the wire. They have the momentum, but if they don't set up the field and get the ruck going, I don't know. It's close. And uh, let me tell you, the Centennial Tigers player, not in any great hurry <laughs> to bring the ball back to the middle of the ground. Absolutely. Because there is no time on, unlike in traditional Aussie rules format, where we'd be stopping the clock and it wouldn't restart until the umpire throws the ball up. And the hoot is gone! The hoot is gone. They've run out of time, Orange County. It is all over. And the Centennial Tigers have hung on by four points in this Women's Division Two match and set up a date with the Texas Heat in the Women's Division Two Grand Final on Field 4 at 2 p.m. 2-4-16. Centennial Tigers, Orange County, two straight 12. Mackenzie Adamo. What a game of footy for 12 aside. That was wonderful. It was great to see the matchups. Uh, you know, there were some hard hits. Melissa Wilhelm is real good at uh, tackling, and seeing her and Sarah kind of battle it out was a lot of fun. We've got coming up next here on USAFL.com uh, on field four, Seattle versus San Francisco. I mean, uh, Seattle, can they do it? I is there a glimmer of hope that they could pull off the upset? You know, we'll see. Uh, there's, uh, we're speaking about women's. We're speaking about D1. women's, obviously. 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 Women D1. Uh, yeah, they've got some great players. They've got some good field structure. But, you know, the maidens, they're just so fit. They have a lot of Gaelic combo, you know, players who are playing both Gaelic and footy, which is a great transition sport. And um, it'll be a fun game to watch. Well, Mackenzie, thanks very much for your company for this game. I'm Peter Holden. I'll be speaking to you again in about 10 minutes' time when we bring you the women's D1 Grand Final, uh, me, women's D1 semi final between Seattle and San Francisco, the winner to go through to the Grand Final, and that is where they will meet the Minnesota Freeze. Until then, thank you very much for your company, and uh, we'll be back again in 10 minutes' time.